yeah, when I'm home, like me, me and um, another guy, Tim uh, McTagg from Under Oath, we, uh, we started a company called Audible Diversion Group. And um, one of the major things that we do is um, we basically facilitate the entire online um, retail for a few bands, one being um, Under Oath, the other being The Almost. And uh, Glass Ocean, also Nate Young from Anne Berlin has an art company called Verger Studio. We sell a lot of his stuff, and that's just basically what we um, do. We get a lot of offers from bands that sort of want us to do for them what we do for us, but for the most part, we kind of keep it really small. And rather than trying to be like the next, you know, Merch Direct or AKT Studios or whatever, we don't really want to do that. We just kind of want to take put the ball back in our court as a band and just. Uh, you know, I think nowadays with the industry being the way it is, like I think artists need to, if they care, they need to think of ways, and it doesn't matter which way, but any way that they can kind of connect with um, their fans and um, cut out the middleman a lot of the time, you know. So, so basically at the end of the day, our fans get better merch for cheaper prices, um, and they get it from, from us personally, which means like every now and then we always slip in a note, we hand sign stuff, we take a lot of time to do that. So it's a little extra. It's I just so think we wanted to put a personal spin on one of the many ways that fans connect with us, um, that being buying shirts, merchandise, you know. If a kid's going to care enough about the band to to um, wear it proudly on their chest, then I think that we should take an extra five minutes out of our day and really think about that person's needs and, and what would get that person stoked most. Because I think when you take a fan and you make the fan your customer also as a company, they become like the ultimate you know the ultimate um facet of your business and art you know they're not only your fan but they're your customer so they become like the only thing you focus on i think that's important and i think too uh, you know i mean there there are there are a lot of bands doing a lot of really cool things design wise and we're, we're i would never profess to be you know the cutting edge of fashion because we're not but we try you know we, we try to do things a little bit differently because if you want to wear an under oath shirt if you want to wear an almost shirt or a Glass Ocean shirt, or something from Verdure Studio, it's like you can buy that stuff from anybody. Because everybody out there has got a clothing company, and all that means is that they make t-shirts. Mm-hmm. You know, We're bands. We like um, our art to be heard and felt, and we just want people to care about what we do the way that we care about our favorite artists. You know, And I would have been stoked growing up if, you know, you know Tom York or Trent Reznor or anybody, you know, like, I mean, Metallica, whoever, like, packed a T-shirt, had the time when they were home to pack a T-shirt and send it to me with a note that said, yo, you know, I just want to let you know I personally did this. You guys mean a lot, you know. I mean, personally, I mean, I, 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 have, um, I have a lot on my, uh, on my mind and a lot of, of uh, music I think that I need to write and kind of express. So I'm kind of looking to do something else, and I don't really even know what that is yet. So, I mean, think for me, I think that for the first time in my life ever, I, I want to... Just write and see what comes out, and whatever it is, it is. It's going to be probably rock and most likely aggressive, but I think that um, I just want to write what needs to be written, you know. So I, so I think it'll be it'll be rock based, you know. Probably I don't know anything else. So. I mean, everybody in the band really does a good job of like being important outside of the band, which is a weird thing. Like Dusty, our our guitar player, he um, who has just been around, you know, he was in he was a founding member of Beloved. Um, he was in Dead Poetic for a long time. Um, he's just a notable dude, but when he goes home, because he tours so much, he's kind of like me, he's an old salty guy, you know, like he, uh, he works at Urban Outfitters Corporate, like he works, he has an office job, he like runs their office, you know, and they let him tour, and everybody there is tattooed up, and it's like the perfect job for Dusty, because he's such an organized guy, um, he designs a lot of our merch too, like, at the end of the day, something that's hard for a lot of people, meaning like the public to realize is that this is just... And I don't mean just a side project, but at the end of the day, it's a side project. It's some guy, Aaron. Um, it's his second priority um, to Under Oath. Um, so I think that for us, we, we realize that and we know that, and a lot of us are busy doing our own things. Anyway, so I think that um, for us, it's, it's cool to kind of get a change of pace, which is really what we view the almost as something to do when we're not doing other things. It's hard for people to understand um, when they see it all the time or they hear it all the time or if someone thinks we're their favorite band, they think about it like we're this full-time thing, but we're not, you know. Yeah, it looks like January, yeah. Okay. We've got, like, so much 
just stuff. We kind of need to like lasso it and pull it in, tighten it up a little bit. But I think that everybody's kind of coming to the table with like, hey, this would be cool. Hey, check this out. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Let's do this. And then like, and then lo and behold, you got a song. We sit back and we're like, wow, what a weird freaking song. You know what I mean? But then like, you know, some of the dudes were on tour with us. Like that, is that new almost. And we're like, yeah, you know. And they're like, yeah, that's awesome. Like so, whether or not they like it is is um, beside the point. I think that people are recognizing the fact that oh, that's maybe the next step for you guys. I think that it makes me feel better because I know that Aaron, he did write the first record. Um, so we kind of want to um, grow as a band because we are a band, but I think that uh, we kind of want to stay true to what kids uh, uh, initially latched onto with the band. You know, they, there was a certain sound and a feel and a vibe, and that's what um, attracts people. So, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, I think that's what, what people should still recognize, but should grow. Why shouldn't it? You know, I've got like five songs. Aaron's got like he said like four or five songs. Me and Aaron are very like complimentary because I don't really care. It's not about winning for us. If the dude's like, that's awesome, but can I take this riff and put it in this song that I wrote? And I'm like, okay, but then the riff that you're taking, I want to beef it up a little bit. Add this on the end, and then we're gonna stick it right back where the other, where the other one's missing. You know, like we do a lot of that, which is funny. Maybe it means that all our songs sound the same. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't know what the what the public's. Um, like, uh, I guess what their what their view of it is, or what the what their understanding of the almost is. But it wasn't that Aaron is like this crazy control freak and wanted to play everything. I think it's that he secretly didn't. I don't think he. I don't. I don't think he really wanted a band. I think he had the means to go and record. He had some downtime. He had some songs. My personal opinion, and I don't know how fans see it, but. He went and kind of put these songs together, I think maybe even out of curiosity to see what would happen. And I don't think he, I mean, I remember we, we talked with Aaron Sprinkle last night, the guy who recorded the record, and we, we were hanging out with him in Seattle. He said that Aaron wasn't going to put Say the Sooner on the record because he didn't think that it was good or it was, he just thought it was weird and it kind of bummed him out a little bit. And he got kind of got pressured to put it on and then he got pressured to put the record out and become a band. And he, you know, so it, that's why no one else was involved. And then, so I think now it's it's less about Aaron being this controlling guy and more about, um, all right, hey, here it is. I have this album. I put a band together. I trust these dudes. I love these dudes. These dudes are a part of the band because they liked the music. I mean, I was drawn to it. I was used to playing heavy stuff. I was drawn to it because I didn't write it. You know, I would have never wrote Say This Sooner. I, I wouldn't have. It wouldn't have happened if I was in the band. So I think me and Dusty talk about that a lot. Like, I think the songs are really good. The album's really strong. And it just wouldn't have come out that way if if uh, if Aaron had planned to release it. I think it was a fact that he just wanted to write all these songs, um, not knowing what would happen, that it was able to come out the way that it did in Honest, you know? So, I don't know. Maybe, I, you know, maybe. I don't know. We, we definitely hung out in the studio till like, yeah, like till like four in the morning. Just being in that room, like realizing that that's really where magic happens. I mean, the, the room we were sitting in, so many of my, like, records that I really like, like, my favorite records or records that I really respect happened in that room, you know, because of that guy, yeah. you know? So, wouldn't be a bad thing. We kind of really want to play upon the whole, not, I say backwoods, but I don't mean backwoods like we're barefoot and we live in trees, like the Ewoks or whatever. I mean, like, very homegrown, like, rock and roll, just this is how it is. This is we don't, you know, we come out. Like, it's funny, we always tour with these bands that have, like, really sweet hair, and like wear like neon colors and their jeans are awesome and like all this stuff and then we come out we're old and bitter and just like what's up we're the almost <laughs> hope we sound good Ooh, ah, you know that's kind of our deal i think if we collaborated with somebody it would be somebody who just is known for being just brutal yeah <laughs> like jeremy nick is though he is a, even though he's got the voice of a freaking angel the guy is a freaking he's he is as credible as credibility can you know can oh, lend, but I, I assume that there would be collaborations are always good. Yeah. It's ear candy. It gives the kid that bought the record something. Oh, sweet! This is awesome. Or oh, I don't know who this guy is. Yeah. Maybe let me go buy this guy's CDs. Or maybe the fan of you know of uh, of a Sunny Day might say, read that Jeremy Enoch sang on this band called the Almost Record. And there are people out there that don't know who we are. I mean, <laughs> of course. <laughs>